In this video series, we will code an interesting little app called Turtle Graphics. Now, rather than giving you some complicated explanation about the program, let me just show you what it is and what it does. So, at the beginning, we have a board or game board 20 by 20, and uh, here's our instructions. We have uh, options that the user can enter, like 1 through 7, and uh, option 1 means pen up and 2 pen down. What this does is uh, we keep moving across the board and if the pen is down we will be actually drawing, we will be changing the characters. And if the pen is up we'll simply be just moving without making any changes. And then we have 3, 4, 5 and 6 which is the directions that we go. North is up obviously, east is uh, right, south is down and 6 which is west would be to the left. And 7 will quit the app. So let's go for example south, so 5, and it says turtle is moving south and enter the number of spaces. And you can see that pen is currently not drawing. So let's just move 10 spaces down. And you can see that our turtle moved 10 spaces down. So now put the pen down, so press 2, and I'll move to the east, and I'll move 10 spaces again. And you can see that as we moved, we changed all the characters. And let's go uh, south again, five spaces, and let's say west, five spaces, and you can see that we are drawing now. Now let's uh, move the pen up, so I'll press one, and move, let's say, south, three spaces. And you can see that now we stop drawing. And now let's move south again, and let's try ten spaces, and you can see that we have only one space available. So when we do that, we get an invalid move error, and it tells us how many spaces to the south is possible to make. So instead of south, let's just go east. So I'll do four and move, let's say, ten spaces. Pen down and let's move north. So let's say three and, I don't know, seventeen spaces. And you can see this is how we go on the board and how we keep moving and drawing if the pen is down or just moving without drawing if the pen is up. Alright, so this is what we will be building and I think we are now ready to jump in and start coding. So the first thing, let's start creating a class that will be our game board. Next thing, the game board will of course be a 2D array that will hold the rows and columns. So I'm going to create a constant that will be the size of the board and this way it's gonna be the size of our array. So as you can see I set it to 20 as default but of course we can change it to whatever we want. Next, there are two spaces on the board. Either it is an empty cell on the board or a cell on which we drew. So we can create constants for these symbols too. So empty cell will hold a symbol of a dot, this is it, and uh, if we draw on the cell it will change to an O character. Again, you can make these symbols anything you want. Alright, next let's create the game board array. And I'm going to make static so it retains values and we can keep adding and changing the values from other parts of the program as well. So here is my game board array and you can see that it's a character array and that it's a static one. And now we have to initialize the array of course and I'm going to do that in a constructor. So I created the constructor, no arguments need to be passed in, and I initialized the array to a new character array, and you notice that the size of the array is 20 by 20, we're using the game board size constant that we declared. Alright, so next thing is to make the board and display it. So the board will have three different states. First, it's going to be initialized at the beginning of the each game. So basically it will be a 20 time 20 board and each cell will be set to a dot character, which is the game board symbol. As you could see uh, in the demonstration, when we draw, we change the symbol to the O. So that's gonna be the second state. And finally, we need to be able to draw the board after it is updated. In other words, as we move and draw, we need to display updated board each time we move. So let's start with initializing the board. Now of course I'm going to create a method that will do that. 
So it's a simple void method. I'll just call it init game board. And here I simply want to populate our game board array with dot characters. So we need to loop through both dimensions of the array and set each index to a dot character. So I have my outer loop and I have my inner loop. So we're looping through the rows as well as the columns. And here, like I said, we need to assign the game board symbol, which is the dot, to each of the indexes. So our game board array with the indexes of i and c will hold the game board symbol. And that's it. Our array is now set, so our game board is ready to be used. So now we are ready to draw it. Of course, I'm going to create a method for that as well. So here's my method. However, we don't just want to draw the empty or drawn cells. These cells are all stored in our game board array, but we also need to draw a turtle on the board, which is the symbol X that you saw on the demonstration. In other words, one of the cells on the board will need to represent our current position of the turtle. So our draw method needs to know in what position to draw the turtle and how to draw the turtle. In our case, like I said, we will represent the turtle by a character X. So we need to pass all this information into our method as arguments. So like I said, we need the position of the turtle or in other words, the turtle's position X and Y coordinates. So I'm passing the integers, one for position X and one for position Y, where our turtle is currently going to be. And like I said, we need the character that will be our turtle. So I'm passing an argument turtle, which is the type of character. And now we can draw the board just like we did in our initialize method. So I'm going to copy paste the loop. However, we are not going to be assigning the game board symbol, so I'll delete that. Because uh, here's the difference. We will draw all the cells that are our board, which is the dots, except one cell, which will be the turtle which is going to be the X. So if the current cell we are looping through is the position of the turtle, we will display the turtle character. Otherwise, we will display the game board character. So we need an if statement and we need to see if our indexes I and C equal the position X and Y respectively. So if I equals the position X of the turtle and the index C equals the position Y. Then we need to display the turtle and we are displaying the turtle character. Otherwise, we'll simply display the game board character. Now the game board character in this case doesn't have to be necessarily just the uh, symbol. I'm talking about character that is currently being stored on that position in our array. It could be already a character that we draw or it could be still an empty cell, which would be the dot. So I'm not going to draw symbol, the game board symbol, or use space. Instead, I'm going to draw whatever is currently being stored in that position in our game board array. So whatever is in I and C indexes of the game board array, whatever character that is being stored, we will display on the screen. But at the end of the line, I want to move to the next one. So after the inner loop, basically I'll put in a new line and then we'll start another iteration of the loop and I'll put another row of the game board. And finally, we need a method that updates the board as we move the turtle and draw. Now I'm going to do two separate updates. I will update the board as we move vertically, which is up and down, or in our case, north and south. And I will also update it as we move horizontally, or in our case, east and west. Now this part is a little tricky, but if you end up scratching your head about what it is that I'm doing, then please just keep watching. It will become clearer once we start actually using these methods. All right, so to move north and south, I need to actually know if I am moving north or south. I also need to know the current position of the turtle from which I'm going to be moving. And I need to know how many spaces we are going to move the turtle. And 
I need to keep track of the Y position as well. Now since I am moving up and down only, then all that is changing is my X position. We are only changing the rows. The Y position, which is the column on which we are, remains constant. Ok, so let's create the method and update the board on X axis. So here's my method and now we need to pass all the information into the method as arguments. So we need the start position, so it's going to be an integer, I'll call it start. We need the number of spaces we are moving, so it's going to be another integer, spaces to move. And I need to know if I'm going up or down, if I'm going north or south. And for that, a simple integer will work as well. So the way I'm going to do it, if I am moving up, we can pass plus one, and if we are moving down, we can pass a negative one. We will use this to revert our position by multiplying with plus one or negative one. So of course, if we multiply by one, nothing changes, However, if we multiply by negative 1, the result will be negative. And this way we will be able to move up and down across the board by either adding spaces to our position or deducting spaces from our position. And finally, we need to keep our Y position unchanged. But we need to know where we are on both X and Y. So I'm just going to do an integer of our Y position, but I'll call it constant Y to indicate that this is a constant, we, we are moving up and down, so we are not changing our Y position. Now there's one more thing, I need to have access to this method without the need to instantiate the object. Remember the game board array is static because we keep changing it directly and we keep changing it directly through the update methods. So I'm going to make this method static too. Ok, before I code the logic to update the board, let's just create a method that updates the board left to right, or in our case west and east direction. It'll be almost identical, so I'm going to copy paste it. And of course this one I will call update game board y, because we are updating it left and right. And of course we need to start, we need the space to move, we need to know if it's up and down, however a constant, what's not changing now will be the constant x, because now we are moving uh, left and right, so our x position remains the same. Ok, so let's go the logic to update along x axis. But we are not updating the whole board, we are only updating the cells on which the turtle drew. So we need to replace those characters with the characters that we use for drawing, which is the use space O. So in our case we'll simply replace the dot, which is the game board symbol, with the letter O, and that way we will represent the actual drawing. Now since we are only updating along one dimension, in this case X, we only need one loop. And we don't want to loop through all the indexes, we only want to loop through the indexes that we are actually changing. And how many indexes are we actually changing? Well, that is the space to move number that is being passed as an argument. So if we are moving 10 spaces, then we will loop through 10 indexes. So I'll start my for loop, and as you can see, we start from the index 0, and we are moving those spaces that we are passing as an argument, and of course we iterate by 1. So now we want to update our game board array and we are replacing the dots with letter O. And we want to change this uh, symbol to used space as we draw through it. So now we have to figure out what indexes we are actually changing. Well we know that we are moving across X axis only, so our Y index will stay the same, and remember that value is being passed as argument, so our Y index is going to be the constant Y variable that is being passed. So that's our second index, which is our y, but what is our x index? Well, everything we need is being passed into the method. First, we are changing the index from our current starting position. So we'll start with start. Then we simply add to it our current index i that we are looping through. So we will do plus i. 
but remember we are only looping as many iterations as there are number of spaces we are moving through. However, we could be moving up or down. So instead of just adding i, we need to multiply it by up or down variable. So let's do that. So again, keep in mind that the variable will be either plus one or minus one. So basically we will either keep i positive, meaning we will move up, or it will make i negative and we move down. So let's say we are moving three spaces down. So first, obviously i equals zero. We begin from the start, but first we of course have to perform the multiplication. So i equals zero, then we come down here and perform the multiplication. i is zero, so anything multiplied by zero is zero. So we'll add zero to our starting position. So nothing really changes. That's the first iteration. Second, i equals one. So now we multiply one times, remember we are going down, so minus one. So now we have minus one as a result. So we'll get start minus one, then i equals two, and then two multiplied by negative one is minus two. So now we have start position minus two. So that's how we will move down. And if we wanted to move up, we'll pass plus one. So basically we'll start from our start and add i to it because anything multiplied by one is the same value. And we of course can do the same for update game board y method. And again, I'm going to just copy paste everything, put it in my update game board y. But this time the constant x, that's gonna be our first index. And our y index will be calculated the same way. However, since we are moving left or right, instead of having variable up or down, I'm going to rename it left or right, and that's gonna be passed into this uh, method as argument, so I'm going to multiply i with that. But again, it's going to be just plus one or minus one, but just to make sure that we distinguish between going up and down and left and right, we use a different name for this uh, variable. And once again, if we multiply by negative number, we are moving left because we are deducting from the start. And if we multiply by positive one, we are moving to the right. Okay, so this is the game board class. I hope you can see how this is going to work, but if you don't yet, please don't worry because it will become clearer when we start putting everything together in later videos. So I'll see you in the next video.